I do want to go back to your your swing analogy though, because I love that. And you were you were one of the guys who initially introduced supination pronation bias to me, bicep tricep dominance, which made a ton of sense to me right out of the gate. And I think about your experiences working from Cy Young winners, guys who are making hundreds of millions of dollars to young kids. And this is something we've talked about in some data videos, but looking at natural force application to the ball and designing the arsenal off of that, off of what the guy is good at. And we know like carry became very popular. Coaches were kind of forcing that, altering mechanics. And I think your analogy there is great, but if you could just talk about what you've seen based on those biases from young kids all the way through the big leagues. Parents look at me funny when I'm working with an 11 or 12 year old and I tell them like, all right, let's scrap your change up. Like we're gonna go two breaking balls. And I think that's what you're ultimately gonna be. And like, they just give me this crazy look. Um, but then I go, okay, you know, what does Justin Verlander throw? What is Clayton Kershaw throw? What is Garrett Cole throw? What does Shane Bieber throw? And you start breaking out all the guys that don't throw a change up. <laughs> And they're Cy Young caliber pitchers, and it, it forces the parent to do a double take. Like, well, I guess those guys are pretty good, and they don't throw a changeup. So would you rather spend your time doing something you're really good at that has synergy with your natural strengths, your natural motor preferences, or do you want to waste your limited reps as a pitcher? We only get so many throws off a mound, and we have to recover. We're not like hitters where we can just take hundreds of swings every day. Uh, would you rather you know, spend those reps on what you're ultimately going to be good at or try to do something that's going to be mediocre and maybe use it 5% of the time someday. And so I've had a lot of success even convincing parents, you know, especially the 13 and 14 year olds where now they're starting to build some functional strength, starting to prepare for high school and travel ball and the showcase circuit and all those things getting recruited. Um, like let's make your practice time more valuable by eliminating things that ultimately I don't think are going to raise your ceiling very much let's actually find out the the things that are going to raise your ceiling and make you a better player. And, you know, you're, you're investing in yourself. Those practice sessions are going to compound over time. Um, and so it, it's, it's super fun to see the reaction and it, you actually see a sigh of relief in the player because he'll try to throw a change up and he, he can't do it and he knows it. And he, he actually starts dreading having to practice it versus you tell him, you know, to throw a cutter and a curveball, and all of a sudden he's just ripping them off and all of a sudden pitching is more fun. So I, I, I try to play off that and just my experience over the years is like, let's just go with what they do naturally and let's not try to fight it just because some pitchers have a great changeup doesn't mean you have to have a great changeup. Would you be able to, for people who aren't familiar with the supination pronation bias, like uh, explain that idea and how would someone watching this like be able to tell which group they kind of fall into? Is that just experimenting with breaking balls, changeups and seeing what they Feel more comfortable with or do you have a specific way that you look to see kind of what bias they naturally have in terms of how they apply force to the ball probably the easiest way is um, when you throw a breaking ball can you create horizontal sweep on it um, that's usually the easiest way you know does your curveball have more horizontal break than downer break um, is it easier to throw two different breaking ball shapes or more you know you get into the musgroves and the bowers and the walker buellers they throw tons of shapes um, generally if you can create big arm side movement and very small cutterish breaking ball movement, you're more pronation bias. And then if you can create multiple breaking ball shapes, uh, especially if you can sweep the ball to your glove side horizontally, much more supination bias. And, and that's a really quick litmus test on, on what you are. Uh, there are guys that are more neutral in nature. I mean, there is a whole spectrum, uh, but a lot of guys are, are really extreme in one or the other. And for the pronation guys, you know, the, the Zach Granke's, the Max Scherzer's, the Pedro Martinez's, the Jake DeGrom's, it's usually power cutter, really big change up depth. And then you know it because they almost can't create power on a curveball. Right. And most of them just dump it in as their fourth pitch. And that's a really good clue that they like to create extension, tricep dominance, pronation bias, however you want to describe it. And then something that where they have to bring it in uh, almost centripetal force, bicep dominance, shorten the radius, however you want to describe it. Uh, they can't create power that way because that's not their motor preference. And But they effectively use it. You know, Zach is famous for his 59 mile an hour curveballs right. and Scherzer dumps it in. Kurt Schilling used to do it back in the day. Pedro, like, there's no power to it. And they're really known for the power changeup um, or, you know, a short little cutter. Uh, but it's just it's just finding that synergy and just rolling with it as opposed to fighting it for a really long time 
and ultimately delaying getting the most out of your career.